Hi everyone, welcome back this week. I'm Dr. Han. So I've been quite busy with my main job at the university this past week, and I didn't have enough time to do a lot of visuals for my videos. So I'll be doing a little bit more talking in this one than my usual videos. So I want to talk about this new four dose versus three dose effectiveness. Retrospective study published in the BMJ on May 24th. Now, this study came from Israel, and they looked at the fourth dose Pfizer COVID vaccine's relative effectiveness versus three doses in a 10-week period. Now, the data was pulled from an Israel national database during their Omicron wave. Out of 97,499 60 years old and older people who are eligible for the fourth dose and had a PCR testing during the study period, 27,876 participants had received the fourth dose, and the rest had received the third dose. But this study presented two key information, and number one is how does the fourth dose do to protect against severe COVID-19? Now, relative to the third dose, the vaccine effectiveness of the fourth dose or the second booster to protect against severe COVID-19 is 72%. This number sounds pretty good, but when we look closer at the data, the number of severe cases combined was less than 500, which is less than one percent of the study participant who had received either four doses or three doses. So it implies that the third dose was still pretty good at protecting against severe illness, and the additional booster provided only a little bit extra boost. The second key information is that how good is this second booster is to protect against COVID-19 infection? The short answer is that it helped by about 65 percent initially. But the relative effectiveness dropped very quickly to only about 22 percent by the end of 10 weeks. By now, we should not be too surprised by the waning effectiveness. But this fourth dose or second booster appeared to wane faster than the third dose. Now, this clearly showed that we cannot boost our way out of infection. But I think what the official has not made very clear to the public is that these vaccines are not designed to protect against infection.、Um, instead, it's only designed to protect against severe illness and death. But the current recommendations appear to be telling eligible people to keep get boosting to protect against infection. Now, I think the officials have good intentions, especially when we are talking about potential long COVID symptoms, even with mild infection. But another recently published study showed a vaccine can only reduce long COVID symptoms by about fifteen percent. Now, when we combine all the new findings, there's clearly some limitations with these second boosters. Now, I want to make myself clear that I'm not saying that there is no value. There's still some value to it. But if you decided to get this second booster or the fourth dose, you need to be aware that the protection does wane, and the benefits appear to be smaller than the first booster. And on a separate topic, it also does not seem to be a very good use of taxpayers' money when the narrative is that there will be a new variant-specific booster coming out for the fall or the winter. So that's a very quick video for this week. And on a separate note, I will be traveling to Salt Lake City for a training this coming week. So I may or may not have time to prep a health science topic for you guys. But on the other hand, I may do some vlogging videos on my personal channel. I think that would be a little bit more fun. If you're heading out for a vacation soon, I hope you will have a good time and safe travel. And again, thank you very much for your support and watching this video. And please stay safe, stay healthy, and take care. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.